Hey, I improved this commercial pig in places ability to see fiducials and pretty much everything else with the most basic circuit you can imagine. Wasn't as straightforward as I'd hoped though. So let's see what worked, what was weird and how it went. So I dragged this Charm High T36VA pick and place into satisfactory service by upgrading it to use OpenPNP, but a few things needed to be addressed right away. Top priorities were that wobbly bed and the lighting situation. The wobbly table was replaced with something more sturdy. It's not perfect, but still better than the original. So this <laughs> became this. In terms of lighting, I don't know who thought a little light strip across the Y bar was a good idea. I mean, it's okay. No, it's inadequate. With the right room lighting and certain boards, it worked fine. Feeling much better. Look at that. Oh, goody. In other cases, it was just awful. So, fit check. Yeah, that's wrong, that's wrong, 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 terribly wrong. Now I hacked up a solution, a crummy solution. So the workaround I got was to set this to like two. And by doing that, I'm not actually looking at the pad, I'm looking at that big hole in the mask. That works, mostly but I'm kind of looking at something that is a lot less precise than the pad itself. But with the addition of this little ring, what a difference. Now I've set the package to the actual size of the pad with the top light on and look, you can actually see it. And here we go. Perfect match on the pad. Perfect match on the pad. Perfect match on the pad. This is nice. So that's pretty awesome. Now, this is not complicated. It must be the first circuit anyone doing electronic attempts. I like to think of LEDs converting energy to light as doing their job for a fixed flat fee, non-negotiable. Certain conditions apply. Now, if you've got six volts in your purse and every LED demands 1.2V to work, on payday, as you walk down Kirchhoff's stairwell here and you pass a diode, you see your balance diminish. And that means, if you string enough LEDs together, that there's only a little oomph left over that you need to slow down with a resistor which is good because I'd rather spend my Vs on visible light rather than waste heat. And it means we can hand a flimsy resistor, a small and cheap one, all the residual work. So the only questions are, how much will each LED charge us and how much is in our wallet? Now, much like my friends at Charm High with this lighting, I wanted to be lazy, economical, with the wiring. So my first thought was to hook them up somewhere inside the pick and place head. The plan is to sit the board on that little lip at the bottom of the bullet camera, and I found a somewhat nice place to siphon off five volts in there. So I got started without any more of that bothersome thinking because white LEDs always have a V drop around two or three volts, nothing complicated, right? With that in mind, the original design looked like this. You can see there are pads to put resistors in line with every LED wired in parallel because there isn't enough headroom to ensure two in a row would actually work. To know the actual price to play for both uh, spare parts like these I got from AliExpress or wherever, and even nice ones with a data sheet, I always like to measure and write the VF somewhere obvious for future reference, like on this bag here. In most cases, this is as easy as breaking out the meter and sticking it into diode mode. But some meters can't handle high forward drops for pretty small values of high, as in regular white and blue LEDs. They'll even light up, but uh, no reading. Pwomp pwomp. The bench meter has no problems at all. And it isn't about supply voltage, at least not obviously. This is my first, oldest, and cheapest meter, and it does fine. In those cases, sure, you could make a little diode resistor circuit and just measure the voltage, but with my lazy man solution, you can get a good, inaccurate, but good enough clue. Just bust out a bench supply and set some higher V, like five, and a really low current limit. I set it at 10 MA here. In reality, it comes out about 8.5 milliamps, and then just feed the lead straight from there. The current limit trips and the supply reduces the output voltage until it's just hovering above the forward voltage drop. And the results are pretty consistent. Not exactly the poor man's diode checker cause you do need a decent supply, but it works with the low end B and K switchers too. You saw the results of having the light on when checking fiducials. I did that by sticking the ring on the cam and feeding it with a lipo taped to the head. That actually worked pretty nicely and I did a few small runs like that, but it wasn't exactly a permanent solution. Now, the thing I hadn't considered when thinking of siphoning off 5V from inside the head is no easy way to control the lighting. Fine, I'll do the blasted wiring. 
So as I'm painfully threading this thing through the drag chain, I actually bother to check what type of connector the lead strip has, a two pin GST type deal, and measure the voltage provided, cause I'm smirked. Now it was a weird 20 ish volts. So uh, I think I'll need to handle between say 20 and 24 volts. Mm. That's not great. Current design would mean dropping like 20 volts across the resistors, which is the exact opposite of what I was talking about earlier. To provide 15 milliamps to those seven LEDs, that little board would have to waste about two watts, which it's not designed for, and uh, that's unacceptable anyways. So back to the drawing board. I could probably get away with stringing the seven LEDs together, but I don't trust the machine to always give me the juice while in operation. Six would work, but I want seven. And I'd like this thing to be flexible, save for the PCB to be usable for 12V situations too. So the final compromise was this, two strings of LEDs that'll handle up to 24 volts with the downside of wasting about 400 milliwatts in that case. Not super, but it'll operate as is down to 15 volts or so. Okay, now a lot of the function of this little thing is bound up in its physical form. I need to wrap around that bullet camera, can't extend too far out because of how close it gets to the idler structure on the left, and wanna rest on that little 1.6 millimeter lip. Calipers tell me we have a diameter of 26 and at best over mm, seven millimeters or so of clearance from the idler. Also, I can't make it all the way around because the camera's pretty close to the PNP head. The calipers say I can make it around the full diameter and down to about 22.5 millimeters. So how much arc is that? Ooh, cords. I dust off the trig and define a little function in octave to get uh, the arc angle from the known radius and cord length. And that tells me I should go around about 240 degrees. Now I think of arcs in terms of center radius and arc angle, but KiCad doesn't describe them that way. Instead giving you the generally less useful coordinates of the start and end points and the angle and figuring out the radius based on that. So the way I handle this uh, when I'm not in a mathy mood, I'll drop a small circle where I want the center to be. Then for arcs, the cursor will snap to the center point and you can lay it on the same spot repeatedly. Pull out the inner arc to the radius of choice, a little over 13 here, and use the indications to get R240 degrees. The outer arc starts in the same place and extends out an extra seven millimeters. I also gave myself a little visual indication of clearance for the lip using the silk screen because it looks so nice. Now this was a quickie, so I just eyeballed the placement for the rotation for the LEDs, and I tweaked the arcs a bit to give me more wrap on the front uh, on the inside. And that was it for the board. I just had to wait a bit so I could piggyback on the client project, cause I'm not paying 50 bucks to ship this $5 PCB. In that time, I also made a little power splitter board, cause I likes it clean, and want to have both the LED strip and ring powered at the same time. When I got it, assembling a couple was a non-event, and then came the time for finishing the hookup. That's uh, this one. Boop and finally giving it some power. First test, that did not work, did not work. Yeah, I know, stunning visuals. So it didn't work, even the lead strip was out. A little investigating led to this. So lesson of the day, this here red doesn't mean positive. No, 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 it's just red. Don't worry about it. Now, I don't know what happened. Chiffon. And which wire should I use here? Uh. 2D. The wiring that can be told is not the eternal wiring. Therefore, the master teaches without saying anything. Oh, me sure. But I was operating under the assumption that we'd agreed that red was positive and hadn't paid attention to the sign on the meter when measuring. Good job, everyone involved. Good job, good job. Flipping the connectors brought things to life. Now the ring is a permanent part of the pig in place and it's working great. I set up a test project with boards of different colors and fiducials and really put it through its paces. Look at that. The switcher cam on this is slow on the refresh, but the machine performs admirably. I also tried in extreme lighting conditions. Zero problems. I can use this thing night and day. Cool. The LEDs are far enough from the center that I haven't even needed a diffuser. It's invincible. <laughs> what I find funny is how much was involved with even this pretty much dumbest circuit you could think of. You may have spotted some additional mods on the machine and yeah, I've done a few things that might be interesting. So if you like this kind of info, just let me know and I'll describe those and, and some more soon. Now, even though it's all pretty machine or at least camera specific, I'll put the design files online in case it's useful for anyone. That's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.